This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We end today with a new look at the boxing legend Muhammad Ali. Ali is considered the greatest boxer in the history of sports. In his prime, he was an outspoken advocate of the black Muslim movement and critic of the Vietnam War. When he refused to be drafted and he filed as a conscientious objector, he was sentenced to prison and stripped of his heavyweight title. He appealed his case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court and did not go to prison, but was forced to wait four years before regaining his boxing license. Well, in a broadcast exclusive, we bring you excerpts from a new documentary that examines the struggle Ali faced in his conversion to Islam, his refusal to fight, and the years of exile that followed before his eventual return to the ring. The film is called The Trials of Muhammad Ali, and it has its world premiere tonight in New York City at the Tribeca Film Festival. This is a clip from early in the film in 1964, when the 22-year-old Ali is preparing for his first heavyweight championship. At that point, he was still widely known as Cassius Clay. That night, you should have seen the people. One layoff, two layoffs, 10,000 on each layer, 15, 20 on some. Four layers on the fifth layer. People were looking down on the rain. 55,000, and Cleopatra was at ringside. We don't believe it. The fifth round came. Yeah, I hit him. Yeah, I said, come on, sucker. Yeah. And I said, break it up. I said, there he is. Let me see you close your mouth and just keep it closed. Well, you know that's impossible. No, 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 keep it closed. You know that's impossible. I'm the greatest. And I'm knocking out all bones. And if you get too smart, I'll knock you out. Cassius Clay was training for the Sonny Liston fight for the heavyweight championship. I wanted him to be a registered Muslim. When you come into Islam, we write a letter saying we believe in the teachings and we put our slave name in the letter. Those names the slave master had when they owned our ancestors. So he wrote his letter, sent it off to Chicago, and then they sent back what we call X. He became Cassius X. And then the promoters, they was trying to get Ali to denounce the religion. And they told Ali, you got to get rid of them Muslim cooks and Captain Sam, that's me, and denounce that religion, otherwise there ain't going to be no fight. Well, Ali'd have been training all his life for the fight for the heavyweight championship, so that's some of scare man to death. I said, oh, man, don't believe that. I said, money is the white man's God, and I said, you're the only one who can make any money for him. I said, hold to your belief. That was a clip from the new film, The Trials of Muhammad Ali, the last voice you heard, Captain Sam, who helped bring Muhammad Ali into the Nation of Islam, which gave him the name Muhammad Ali. For more, we're joined by the film's director, Bill Siegel, ahead of its world premiere tonight at the Tribeca Film Festival. The film's set to broadcast next spring on PBS's Independent Lens. Bill also co-directed the Academy Award-nominated documentary, The Weather Underground. And we're joined by Gordon Quinn, executive producer of The Trials of Muhammad Ali, founding member of Cartem Quinn Film. Films, uh, where he has spent four decades making documentaries that investigate and critique society by documenting the lives of real people. We welcome you both to Democracy Now!, Bill. Um, why you decided to make this film? Uh, well, I think your, your last story about the, the integrated prom coupled with um, integrating Little Rock High School shows both how far we've come and how far we need to go. And Muhammad Ali was at the crosshairs of the black freedom struggle and the anti-Vietnam War resistance while he was finding his himself. And so to me it's a journey film that I hope says as much about us as it does about him. And I was I first I discovered Muhammad Ali as a as a kid growing up in Minneapolis. I discovered Muhammad Ali Beyond the Ring about twenty three years ago as a researcher uh on a six hour series called Muhammad Ali the Whole Story. And I came out of that long before I co directed Weather Underground thinking Someday I want to make Muhammad Ali the exile years, uh, because to me that's the most important, notorious, and um, valuable uh, fight of his life in terms of informing us in the present day. 
Well, and because there have been so many films made about Ali in the, in the past, and uh, most focusing, obviously, on his incredible skills as a boxer, uh, those uh, those years in exile from the sport were actually uh, the—he um, was in the prime of, of his life at that time. Could have, been, could have been a much greater boxer than even we re remember if he'd been allowed to continue in the sport at that period of time. Yeah, a lot of people say we never saw the best Ali in the ring, but I think it gave us an opportunity to um, get the best Ali beyond the ring, which to me is even more valuable as much as I love him as a boxer. Bill, the film opens in a just shocking way. Would David Susskind explain? That was a clip that we came on to late in the editing process. And, uh, you know, I was sitting in the room with Aaron Wickenden, who did a masterful job editing the film. Rachel Pakelny also just had a baby, produced the film. And Aaron and I, when we saw that clip, said that's the beginning of the film. And for that reason, it just. Describe it, Jess. Uh, Suskind's in London on a, a talk show with Eamon Andrews in 1968. Ali's in exile. He's been banned. And he's on, Ali's on this, he's sort of imprisoned in this box, you know, black and white TV by early bird satellite. And Suskind just attacks him for everything he's doing in that moment. And it's a powerful reminder or perhaps discovery that Ali was villainized at that point by so many in this country, not everyone. He, he says, was, I don't even want to talk to you. Yeah. You are a felon. You And he went pawn. on and on. A pawn? Yeah. Incredible. I want to go to a clip of a news report from Muhammad Ali, sentenced to prison and stripped of his heavyweight title for refusing to fight in Vietnam. Cassius Clay at a federal court in Houston is found guilty of violating the U.S. Selective Service laws by refusing to be inducted. He is sentenced to five years in prison and fined $10,000. That's an excerpt that came from the documentary When We Were Kings. By Leon Gast, who uh, I met on this uh, 23 years ago film. And Leon, that film collapsed. Leon pulled his segment out. That became When We Were Kings. And he's another executive producer on this film. And Gordon, your decision to get involved with this project and and to uh, and to make this film, what uh, what it means for you? Well, there's a personal dimension that when Ali was fighting with the draft uh, and refusing to go to Vietnam and took this moral stand, I was too. I was a student at the University of Chicago. There's a rally in the film that I actually went to, and he's the only sports figure that I've ever cheered for flat out. But Cartempin's model is producers come to us with something. It's not just their next film. It's something that they're passionate about. And Bill was, I mean, he, I, he actually, how long has it been? That eight we were years. Eight years that um, when he first came to Cartemquin. And it was like, this was the film he had to make. This was, you know, he just had this passion for it. And that's really what we care about at Cartemquin. We're producer driven. Uh, it's a collaborative atmosphere. There's a team of people around. But we want someone who is really, you know, not just building their resume and their career, but this is the story I have to tell. Um, let's go to another clip from this film you chose to produce, The Trials of Muhammad Ali. This is later in the movie, after Ali has refused to fight in Vietnam. We hear from Ali's former wife, Khalil Ali, uh, Ali himself, and Captain Sam, who helped bring Muhammad Ali into the Nation of Islam, as well as Ali's brother, Rahman Ali. Somebody would come out of nowhere and say, you draft out your nigger, go home. Well, he didn't like that at all. I said, we have to do this for a living, man. You don't worry about what people say about you. You got to keep going. And then he talked back at me and says, you're not out there getting embarrassed. I'm out there getting embarrassed. What would you do if somebody did that to you? I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now right here fighting you. You my enemy. My enemies are white people, not Vietnam or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I'm on freedom. You my opposer when I'm on justice. You my opposer when I'm on equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. <laughs> The exiled years were the worst years of me and Ali's life. In Islam, we feel like when we're being attacked unjustly, we feel like it's a, a trial period for us. And we stand on 
righteous and in truth, God going to bring us through it. And that's the way I saw Ali. I suffered with my brother. He said, well, I suffered. We like that. I felt the way he felt. I share my brother's pain. I share his. Grandma's crying. You can't forgive me. I'm very emotional when it comes to this. He paid the price. He did what he had to do. He's the champ. That's Rahman, Muhammad Ali's brother, uh, Bill Siegel. Uh, tell us about the Supreme Court case. So Ali was in exile for three and a half years. His case was on appeal the whole time. He's trying to get back in the ring. Uh, the Supreme Court eventually takes the case. And the, the climax of the film is the way, the process through which they came to a decision. Uh, Ali, as uh, one of the interviewees says, had one foot and three toes in prison until the very last moment when Justice Harlan changes his mind. And I'll let people come see the film to see the rest of that story. It's an amazing story. I mean, you are interviewing, and it's amazing to think that these folks have rarely been interviewed. The Supreme Court Justice Clerk of Judge Harlan, who originally voted for, um, against Muhammad Ali, a five to three decision, right, because Thurgood Marshall had uh, recused himself because he worked with the NAACP. Right. And, and uh, you know, comes out eight to nothing in favor of Ali. And, the process through which that change happens is, you know, to me, an important part of the story. I want to say one thing about that last clip, because to me, that clip demonstrates that this isn't a boxing film, but it is a fight film. And you can see Ali, the fighter, in that film. And also, <coughs> I could walk down the streets of New York with a microphone and, and say, who has a Muhammad Ali story to tell? And pretty soon there would be a line. And so it was important to me to distinguish this film from all the other films about Ali by making it intimate. His wife at the time, his brother, people who were there. It's a small amount of interviewees, and I hope the power of that intimacy comes through in the clip with Rachman there. Uh, and, and Gordon, in terms of uh, producing the film, any particular d difficulties that you didn't expect uh, along the process, because you've done many over the years? Well, you know, it, it, it never gets any easier. You know, after we did Hoop Dreams with Steve James and it broke so big, we thought, well, fundraising will be easier. But it's been just as hard from right from the start. Uh, ITVS came in on this film, uh, and the Ford Foundation was a big supporter near the end. Uh, but we had some rocky moments over the course where we just didn't have the funds, and of course there's a lot of rights issues. It's amazing to see um, him winning the Medal of Freedom, Muhammad Ali, being awarded it in 2005 by President Bush. And President Bush is sort of reaching for his hand. Tell me if I'm reaching here. But it looked to me like Muhammad Ali pulled his hand away. I don't know. You know, I, I don't want to speculate as to what was going through Ali's mind. I do know that it's not in the film, but later, uh, former President Bush kind of stands back in a boxing pose, and Ali gives him this. Uh, like, <laughs> gives him the sign like, you're crazy. Yeah, he, yeah I mean, he's, he does seem to really, he knows what's going on. Yeah. He's very sharp to this day. Yeah. And I mean, for me, the core of the film is here's a guy who took a moral stand. It had to do with his religion. America has never understood who the black Muslims are and what they're about. And that's another dimension of the film that I think is terribly exciting. And, you know, here, here are people just talking about their faith in a way that we never hear in America. We want to thank you both for being with us. Um, Bill Siegel directed the new documentary, The Trials of Muhammad Ali. It'll premiere tonight at the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, Gordon Quinn is the film's executive producer. That does it for our show. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.